Hey there guys, Mike here again. Thanks for clicking this video. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you another preamp that I previously made that I currently use in my main tube amp system. Now I've made a previous videos of a 12 AU7 line stage and a 6N7 line stages. And those line stages are pretty good. They have a low parts count. They're easy to make, but they do have a lot of gain. The preamp that I'm using my main system doesn't have as much gain, but it uses a high quality parts count, so which puts it to a next step above those other preamps. So the tube I'm using is the 5670 tube here. It's a medium mu twin trial tube for general usage. Uh, it's meant for industrial and military applications. And as a matter of fact, most of the tubes I found are actually JAN, which are joint army navy tubes. So they're pretty solid stout tubes and they will work perfect in this pre-amplifier application. We're just gonna use the class A amplifier as per the data sheet. Kind of eliminates any of the guesswork that we need to do here. So if we scroll down here, it tells us to use 150 volts at the plate and a bias resistor of 240 ohms, and that should set the current at 8.2 milliamps. So that should put the tube right in its parameters where it wanna be for this type of application. So let's have a closer look at the schematic here. So for the power transformers, you need a basic one with a 6.3 heater winding, nothing special. We'll go to a full wave bridge rectifier to help boost the B+. The power supplies network here will feed both channels. We'll go DC on the filament supply. The plate loader resistor will be replaced by a constant current source. So for the volume control, we want a high quality volume control or attenuator. We're only gonna be using one amplification stage, so we just need one twin triode tube. We need a high quality uh, DC blocking capacitor and a high quality output transformer. And that should give us about mm, five to seven dB a gain. So let's talk about the enclosure here first. I typically like to make my own closures, but to show you guys that you don't need any special metalworking tools to build your own amplifiers and your chassis, I decided to build this in a 1U rack mount size. And you can just buy them online or an electronic store, and it's just a flat pack that you uh, bolt all together with some fasteners that they supply you. A 1U is 1.75 inches high by 19 inches wide. And they run about 30 bucks. And realistically, metal to build something like this probably would cost more if you actually went to a store to buy it. So I'll just show you a few things on my main system preamplifier that puts this a step above the other preamplifiers that I've made. First of all, I have a stepped attenuator. This is made by Gold Point and it's 100K and has individual steps with resistors actually mounted on them. So it's not like a wire wound resistor or potentiometer that has a disc and a dial with a wiper. These are actually resistors in line to help the attenuation. So that really helps the quality and eliminates uh, noise getting into the system. And the next thing is I have the constant current sources there. So those two circuit boards there on the left and right actually keep the current constant and replaces the load resistor. Therefore, it makes the tube way linear and it has a very high impedance. So part of the reason why this preamplifier is a step above is the output transformers here. Now these are made by MagnaQuest and I managed to snag these before Mike stopped making transformers. They are called B7s. They have 15K primary with 600 ohm secondaries with M4 lamination. These transformers do not take any DC. Uh, you need to put a capacitor to block the DC and I managed to find some high quality RE capacitors and that adds an added expense. Uh, fear not, uh, Edcore makes something similar as well that you will work in this situation. I'll put a link in the description below. So we're actually wiring the tube socket. I have this on a mounted standoff and it's raised up above the floor of the chassis here. And on the bottom side, I have some terminal strips that I wire everything to. So the one side is the negative rail and the other side is the positive rail. So looking at the back of the amplifier here, I have four inputs. And these two jacks here are the outputs. So I have two dedicated for the amplifiers and two dedicated for a subwoofer. I did install a headphone jack there. This preamplifier has 600 ohm output and will drive my AKG K240 headphones. So these are rated for 600 ohms as well. So it impedance matches. So it doesn't go to ear splitting volumes, but uh, it does its job. This is not a dedicated headphone amp, uh, but you can be entertained. So that's another handy feature. 
and I also have a ground post here uh, for your phono stage so you could uh, ground tie your phono stage and your turntable to that to help eliminate or reduce any type of noise issues or ground loop issues. So the power transformer I'm using here is the bare minimum. I would not go anything smaller than this. Since we're only using one tube, um, the filament supply is very minimal. Uh, but we are drawing close to 24, 25 milliamps on the circuit. So this transformer I sourced from Allied Electronics. Hammond makes something similar, and I bet you Hammond actually makes this one. And you can see the specs there. I'll put everything in the link in the description below on what I use. But if you want it to go bigger, you can, but I wouldn't go any smaller than what I spec here. As you guys know, having a good ground scheme is very important to keep your amplifier quiet. And this amplifier is dead quiet and I can't hear any hum or buzz through the headphones. So I think I succeeded. So how I did that is I started in the back there. I made all the grounding isolated. So it only actually grounds to the amplifier in one spot. So from the back here, it goes across, touches all the RCA. And then it comes to the stepped attenuator. And from the stepped attenuator, it goes to the constant current source, the tube uh, hookups. And the other constant current source and then it goes to the star ground which is right there so the power supply unit and the dc filament supply all attaches to that one spot it doesn't touch anywhere else on the chassis and for the safety ground so i have all the frames of the transformers so the two outputs and the power transformer and the ac uh, safety ground all attached to that one spot right there so for the selector switch here I have a long steel shaft that goes to a switch grass switch and I have a little Dalrin isolator there. This is a really high quality switch and what I found was some inexpensive ones that you do hear some crosstalk between the different input devices. So it's well worth getting a little bit better switch. It's very positive. So let's go over the layout here of this preamplifier. We have our AC coming in, it goes to the fuse, goes to the switch via shielded cable, and then back to the power transformer. The power transformer has two windings. It has the 6.3 AC, which we are converting to DC, and we have a little filter network here, and it feeds the tube uh, filament supply with DC to help eliminate any of the 60 hertz uh, buzz or hum coming from that. From the B+, I come to a full wave bridge rectifier and I'm trying to get as much B+, as possible. So we are filter network is our capacitor 1, uh, dropping resistor capacitor 2, dropping resistor capacitor 3. And that feeds the left and right side of the constant current source. So in order for the constant current sources to work, it needs a little bit of compliance. Uh, we have these set at 10 milliamps. So on the top part of the constant current source, we're running about 260, 270 volts, and then we're regulating it down to 160 volts. So this tube always seeing about 10 milliamps of current. As I mentioned, these output transformers uh, don't want any DC on them. So what we're gonna do off the top of the plate, we've got some blocking capacitors here. And these are high quality capacitors that block all the DC. So the AC signal goes to the output transformer and then it gets stepped down to 600 ohms. And then it feeds the output. So this is the main output here and this is the subwoofer output here. And we have an isolation resistor. And for the headphone jack, we're just typed right into the main output. For the incoming signal, we have four incoming. It goes to our switch crash shift to a shielded cable here, which is grounded on one side to the chassis goes to the stepped attenuator, and then from the stepped attenuator, it goes to the left and right triode. And as I mentioned, it gets amplified and the AC signal goes through to the output. I'm using all solid core uh, wire. Uh, red is positive and black is ground. And for the shielded cable, I'm using the signal shield here, the DC here, because it does cross over some other wire. So we want to shield that as best as possible. And then we're also doing the shielding of the AC coming over here. I'm not much of a tube roller, but I've been using these Jan GE 5670s. I'm pretty happy with them. They do make a variant of 2C51s. Um, they're identical tube. I don't know what the difference is other than the numbering. Another tube that you can pick up is a 396A. So this is the 12AU7 tube that I'm using in my other shop preamplifier. Um, you could see that the 5670 is, uh, has different heights. They do have the same diameter, but the heights are different some. So they are both twin triode tubes, but unfortunately they do have different pinouts, so they're not interchangeable. 
So in regards to these constant current devices, I got two new ones here that I just populated that's going into a new amplifier build. You're probably wondering, do I need to install this into the preamp build here? No, ultimately you don't have to. You could substitute it with the plate load resistor. And if you use Ohm's law with the same voltage and the same current, you're probably looking anywhere between 100 and 125K ohm resistor. But I do believe that these have some performance gains and I think it's worth a try. Now, some of you might feel mixing solid state devices with analog gear is kind of faux pas. So be it, but I do believe it's something that you should try and see if you can hear a difference because they do have a good ripple rejection. Keep the two very linear by keeping the current constant as a very high impedance as well. So if you want some more information on how this actually works and what's going on here, I'd recommend looking at the Morgan Jones book here. It gets into the nitty gritty on how this whole circuit kind of works and what it does to the tube and the amplifier itself. I have everything laid out here for the constant current device if you decide to build one. So let's just go over the components quickly. So the first transistor is a 2N2907A and that's the top transistor and this needs to be orientated right. The second transistor is the MJE350 and like the other one it needs to be orientated right. And to set the bias of the transistors we're going to be using these HLMP6000 and the little silver line there signifies the ground. I recommend using 1% resistors to set the current so that's nice and accurate and I mount everything on these little perf boards. Another thing I should mention is that if you're going to draw some uh, excess amount of current, so you should probably install heat sinks on the MJE350. I'll link in the description below of a worksheet that you could apply this constant current device to other input tubes and not just this preamplifier. Just as long as you don't exceed the capacity of these two transistors, it should work for you. So let's have a closer look at this constant current device. So what we have to do first is set the bias of these LEDs and we need to figure out what these resistors needs to be. So these LEDs like to see two milliamps, so we just plug this into Ohm's law and it comes out to you know, one at 130k or we could put two in parallel 270k. The next step is to figure out what the actual current setting resistor. We see this node always hits 0.95 volts always no matter what. So again we just plug that into Ohm's law and it comes out to 115 ohm resistor one percenter quarter watt is all you need. And of course that kind of determines what your B plus is always going to be so you might have to recalculate that. And to help you guys out, I did a worksheet here for the pinouts of the transistors and how to wire the circuit board. And I'll link that below for you guys. Well, I hope you found this video inspiring and perhaps you want to try building this amplifier. If you need a layout for it, please leave a comment below. And if I get enough people, I may put some together for you guys to help you build it. If you haven't done so already, please have a look at my 12 AU7 build and my 6 SN7 line stage build. Yes, the chassis are pretty fancy, but you don't need to do a fancy chassis like this. You could just get away with like aluminum panel, punch all the holes on it, put it on a wooden base, and it would pretty much do the same thing for you. Now I have some other tube amp videos coming up, so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.